Hey guys, JJ back here. This time to chat on when to bet streaks in baseball. I wanted to do a video on this topic uh, as I know it's a popular one. I know we get a lot of questions about it. You know, when to ride a streak, when to stop riding a streak, maybe even when to fade a streak, like kind of jumping out of the car. I always preach to you guys, you know, how important the number is in sports. And it goes without saying it's the most important part in baseball is the price, right? So you see, when it comes to streaks, you know, what slowly begins to happen is the market catches up to it, regardless of the streak. Now, I'm not talking about the Yankees, the Red Sox, you know, Dodgers, Astros, whatever other big market teams there are, um, because the market's always going to over-adjust for them anyway. But I'm merely referencing the rest of Major League Baseball, you know, the teams that most people don't really talk about at the water cooler. You see, streaks um, are your friend, and it's okay to ride them, but remember, you need to be finding value within those streaks as it relates to the current marketplace. And what I mean by marketplace is the sports betting marketplace. The odds makers opening line versus where the public's moving the line. That's what I mean when I say marketplace. I say um, the marketplace because the public as a whole, you know, myself included, we have control over what these lines are or at least become. Now, we might not be able to control what the line opens at, but we can move move lines in one direction or the other based on the amount of money we put on it, right? So um, here's the thing. And streaks in themselves are not just about teams winning. Um, you know, make sure you're looking into teams hitting as well, even teams pitching. Ride game totals, you know, ride um, team totals. You know, maybe maybe runs being scored in the first inning is a is a common streak. Now, keep in mind, that's a great streak um, often to follow. I mean, I know so many people that just religiously only bet first inning uh, in baseball. They won't even touch sides, won't touch totals, won't touch team totals, won't touch first fives, just the first inning because there are so many streaks to be had in that. So definitely keep that in mind as well. Um, and, and like I said, for first fives as well, you'd be surprised how, how many, how many, how much streaks these can all um, amount to. Like people just look at streaks and like all oh, wins and losses. No, no, no. It's it's totals. It's team totals. It's first fives. It's first if run score in the first inning. These are all things that can be um, that can you know garner steam as it relates to streaks, good and bad. Now many though are lazy uh, in their handicapping, uh, and like I said, only really look into into sides and and maybe even totals. But again. Team totals, first fives, and first inning bets are great, great bets to follow, especially long term. Now, what to look for in a streak? And it's a few things. It's a little more complicated than what I'm about to tell you, but I wanted to give you a head start. Uh, at the end, you know, at the end of the day, the the way you develop your own models or predictions. Maybe you're just a guy going off of your head. Maybe you go to a few different websites, you look up information, you find the data you were looking for, and then boom, that confirmed whatever your initial gut check decision was. Maybe you have models that are predicting the future or trying to predict the future based off of backlogged older results um, and you use that to predict your outcomes. But remember, math alone uh, will not win you money in sports betting long term. Um, you need to have the proper ability to mentally compartmentalize plus expected value bets, um, aka EV, from your own models beyond just what they are telling you, right? So with this in mind, here's what I look for in a streak. The most important part, has the market adjusted or even over adjusted for this team's recent play? So you take a team that you like, right? I mean, first of all, this seems so obvious, but far too often people will jump on a team well after the market's already adjusted for it. Now, what does this mean? I'll give you an example. Let's say the Tigers are on a five game winning streak. They played all five games on the road against teams that they uh, that were better than them, right? So they basically exceeded expectations for five games. So now they come back home and they play a team they're worse than. We'll say it's the Tigers playing the White Sox. Tigers are at home, and now they're playing the White Sox. Maybe they just had a series where they played the Red Sox-Yankees, picked up a five-game winning streak on the road, now coming back home. In this scenario, everyone just looks at the streak and goes, wow, this team just beat the Red Sox and Yankees. Just pound the shit out of them at home against the, the White Sox who suck. So line comes out. It's Jordan Zimmerman for the, Tiger, uh, for, the, uh, for the Tigers, and it's Carlos Rodon for the White Sox. You see the line open, Tigers minus 180. You look at that and go, wow, that's a great price. I'm getting the Tigers, who just beat the Yankees and Red Sox. And I, and I really, I, you know, 180 is a little high, but for this, it's not high at all. You think it's a great price with how they've been playing. What I always like to do is I ask myself, pre-winning streak, what would this spread be? Okay? So take away the winning streak, or maybe even that. Let's, let's, take, let's make a full 180. Let's say the Tigers lost five straight games to the Yankees and Red Sox and then came back home to play the White Sox. What do you think the line would be? My opinion, I think it'd be probably minus 130, minus 135. And I think that if they split that series, I think the line might have been minus 140. So now because they won four straight, the market, in this case, when I say the market, it could be the odds makers, it could be the public moving money.
But in this case, the odds makers have already over-adjusted for it. They're saying to you, hey, look, guys, Tiger's on a great winning streak. They're playing great. You want to bet him? Go for it. You're going to have to lay 180. They're a much worse team than 180, but feel free to lay it. Happy for you. Good luck. And you look at that, or most people look at that and go, you know, and the Tigers will lose. The Tigers will drop the game at home, the first game. They'll drop the first game of the series. Big. What the hell happened? I'm supposed, to, I'm supposed to ride streaks in baseball, and this team didn't work out for me. I don't understand. How could this happen? The market already adjusted for it. You were paying too much money for the Tigers at that point. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean you were supposed to go on the other side and bet the White Sox. Maybe you should have. But what I'm getting at is that riding streaks is still a price game. Okay, you still... You still need to keep, as good as streaks are and as good it is to keep streaks in front of you, you still need to keep perspective in, in relation to winning streaks and prices as it relates to the marketplace. Um, people sometimes weigh too much into streaks. And what it comes down to is, is it's lazy handicapping, guys, because what you're doing is you're just saying, I'm okay. I'm okay just continuing to lay all this juice with these teams, um, regardless of what it is. They're on a streak, right? They're winning. You're supposed to ride streaks in baseball. Um, so, no, keep in mind, streaks are a good thing but you need to make sure you're still getting good value within the price. So let's say your model, maybe you add maybe you add 30 cents to a line because of a streak. That seems like a lot to me, but maybe you do. Maybe you add your own 30 cents to a line. Even if you added 30 cents to this line, you still would have been 10 cents off. It still wouldn't have been favorable. So you need to keep in mind that when you're riding streaks, make sure you're still getting a good price. Um, and that could be said for a bunch of different things. Now, um, as I said, Probably a fair line for a game like that. And this is all, all hypothetical, but you'll see these things happen as you're handicapping. Minus 140 was a fair price for that game. You're seeing minus 180. You know, you got to realize that, that don't find yourself in scenarios overpaying because what you're going to happen is you, you're going to have a bad taste in your mouth because you're going to think, oh, you know, all these people tell me to ride streaks, but I keep getting fucked over. Well, again, make sure the price makes sense. Um, biggest and most important part. Now, team totals and first inning are some of the streakiest bets in baseball. And I'm not sure enough people know about this. Be sure to track them. Now, you can find this information on many different sites, but um, these can be streaky, good and bad, and you need to make sure you're following them. The biggest reason is that sports books rarely, rarely over-adjust there. They rarely over-adjust to team totals, and they rarely over-adjust to first inning, despite how good or bad a streak is for them, or for a team. For instance, let's say a team scored five runs in eight straight, but are now going against an above-average arm, or maybe an average arm in a pitcher's park, and you you log in, and you see the team total at 4.5 minus 115. And you're like, hmm, that doesn't make sense. They've scored eight, they've scored five runs in eight straight. Does sportsbooks know something? Why why would they only make it 4.5? Well, they would only make it 4.5 because the odds makers make those team totals based on the total of the game. If they're playing in a pitcher's park, the, 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 the total is not going to be more than eight, eight and a half at the most. Um, you know, it might even be seven and a half, and they might and they might be coming on the road, so they may be an underdog. That that total might be four, three and a half, and you're looking at the numbers and you're going, wait a minute, wait a minute, this team scored five runs in eight straight. They're hitting the ball so well. They've actually scored six runs in eight straight. They're hitting the ball so well. Why? The thing is, is there's plenty of value in that over. There is. Bottom line, there's no there's no guy magic waving his magic wand, you know, fixing fixing shit, whatever. There's plenty of value. The team's hitting. Don't let the don't let the pitchers park fool you. Don't let the you know the average or above average arm fool you. Don't get me wrong. Aces is a whole different a different case and a different scenario. I get that. But what I'm saying is, if you're getting an above average arm, not an ace, above average arm or an average arm in a pitcher's park, always look for spots like that where a team is is piling up runs in a bunch straight, and maybe they're going to a pitcher's park, and now the team totals three and a half, and you're going, <laughs> this is this is an easy play, and you don't have to lay much juice. Again, the sports books rarely adjust there, so make sure you're looking at that. Team totals are, are definitely um, a good thing to bet. With that same thing in mind, what if a team hasn't scored more than four runs in eight straight and now goes into a hitter's park? Maybe like they go into Coors or they go into Texas. And now you see their team total of five and a half. Now this team hasn't scored four runs in eight straight games. And now their team total is five and a half. And you actually, you actually lay dog money um, playing the under. So you're like, oh, they must know something. Or it's Coors. Everybody hits in Coors. Um, I can't stress this enough. When teams are hitting, they're hitting. And they're going to keep hitting. Don't get me wrong. It will stop at some point. But why assume because a team that's not hitting is playing in a different park that that's magically going to change? Um, don't assume that. I'm not saying you can't find isolated instances where that's not the case. But don't assume that. Um, so plenty of value if you were to play the under there, right? Team hasn't scored. Team hasn't scored more than four runs in eight straight games. Now they're going to Texas or Coors Field, maybe even Cincinnati, and it's like, oh, you know, now it's five and a half or five team total. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to stay away from it. Seems a little seems a little sketchy. It's not. 
It's not sketchy. Team's not hitting. Team's not hitting and they're going to a hitter's park. So the, the sports books are always going to make those totals four and a half, five for their team totals. Regardless, they go to cores. You're not going to see a team total less than four and a half at cores. So just keep that in mind. Use that, you know, keep that in your back pocket because it can be very valuable to you, uh, especially long term. Now, with regards to a run being scored in the first inning, sports books heavily weigh this line into the starting pitcher, the field that the game's being played at, and of course the top of the batting order. But boy, can this be a streaky bet, good, good and bad. If you don't believe me, take a look at the Rockies and Giants, who I believe as of this recording in 2019 of this of the MLB season, they have not scored a run in the first inning in a combined 33 straight games between the two of them. Um, there are plenty of teams who also score a run in the first inning in plenty of games straight. Maybe plenty of pitchers give up runs in the first inning. And you'll see how streaky it is. Like, like maybe a pitcher, like, like I know Zach Granke's given up a run like in 12 straight games before today. I, I'm not sure what the specifics were for him today. But, you know, it, you'll notice it's not even just the pitcher. Sometimes it's it's the, the opposite team will get them a run. And, it, and you might look at it and go, oh, well, that's just variance. Like, no, no, no. The, the shit's streaky. Don't don't kid yourself. There is There are plenty of streaks to be had within betting first inning run or no run. Um, now, sometimes um, the perfect storm happens with first inning bets. You'll have a team or maybe even a pitcher, whatever, scored a run or a run will score in the game they pitched in nine straight games. And they're playing a team. Maybe it's a pitcher. We'll give you that. We'll give you an example. Maybe it's a pitcher. We'll take Zach Ranky. Maybe it's a pitcher, Zach Ranky, who a run has been scored in the first inning that he has played in, whether it was for the away team or home team, whatever, in 12 straight games. Now, he's playing a team that themselves – have scored a run in seven, maybe seven straight games. They've scored a run in the first inning. You see the total. Total opens up. Will there be a run scored in the first inning? Minus 115. And you're like, what the fuck? How? How is it only minus one? How do I only have to lay juice of minus 115, Vic? And you look at it and you look at it and you're like, oh, well, okay, so it's Granky at home. We're going up against, you know, um, I can't think of a, of a picture off the top of my head. That would be relevant to the perfect scenario. Oh, you know what? Zach Wheeler. Zach Wheeler would be a good scenario. So Zach Wheeler. And the total for the game is eight and a half. So will there be a run scored in the first inning? Minus one fifteen and minus one twenty five. And you're like, this doesn't make any sense. The the Mets have scored a run in the first inning in seven straight. Granky's given there's been a run scored in Granky's game. Uh, you know what? Seems a little sketchy. You're gonna stay away from it. No, those are the spots you want to target. Yes, there will be a run scored in the first inning. It is a streaky bet, and you have two streaks colliding with one another. Pound that shit over. Yes, there will be a run scored in the first inning. And with that same way, you know, you got the you got the Rockies and the Giants right now struggling to score a run in the first inning. Why on God's earth would people want to bet, first of all, would want to bet their games over? None of those, neither of those teams are scoring. And I don't care who the pitchers are. Like, like this is what I get back to, and this is what, I know I'm going on a tangent here a bit, but this is what's so frustrating me because I see this all the time. Teams that aren't hitting, they'll look at a game, like a total will come out of B7, be two shit pitchers. Somebody will look at the game, what I would consider a naive sports better. Look at the line and be like, ah, oh, Seven? What? It's Marquez versus Derek uh, Holland? Are you kidding me? These pitchers suck. Pound this over. Both these teams aren't scoring. How, like on what on what planet would that be a favorable bet? These teams are not scoring runs. And of course, the game ends. I saw today. Game ended four nothing. And Marquez almost threw a no hitter. These teams aren't hitting. Why would you be foolish enough to bet an over like that? And the same thing goes for the first inning. That's why, of course, there wasn't a run scored in the first inning. It. It's crazy, and this, these are streaks that can be can be followed. And it's it's just it's it, to me it's it's silly that not enough people are doing this, and and so many people are doing the exact opposite, despite continuing to lose money. Um, so I know I'm going a little bit off on a tangent on a separate on a few separate matters there, but first inning bets can be so streaky. So make sure you're riding them, or finding them, and then riding them, regardless of what you do. Um, there's value to be had there. Now, finally, first five inning bets. You see me make a lot of these bets, uh, especially related to totals. But again. Um, the advantage can be had on spreads as well. Now, the most common thing people love to bet, this might seem so obvious what I'm about to say, people love to lay a half run on the first five with aces on the hill, especially for big market teams, Yankees, Red Sox, again, Dodgers, Astros. Oh, Verlander, I only got to lay half a run minus 130 against, you know, who, Seattle? Uh, phew, cash that. I'll bet that easily. Don't be lazy with the research. Anybody can say lay a half run with Max Scherzer, first five. But is the price justified for it? What I'm getting at is that you'll notice that sometimes teams are just starting slow. Or maybe their starting pitchers collectively are throwing great. And maybe there's plenty of value in betting their games under. Maybe there's even value in betting their team total under the first five. You can do that. You can do that. Those are, those are bets you can make. Now, 
Inversely, maybe the teams are coming out with their bats swinging, firing, firing out hits every game, first few innings. And you may want to play a team total over their first five number in that scenario. Maybe you want to play the game over first five. You have so many options that you can use to your advantage as it relates to streaks. So make sure you're consistently riding them and uh, and doing your best. I know this was a 15-minute video, which might seem a little long, but I can promise you I can go on, go on and on about this stuff for hours. Uh, but I wanted to give you some fuel for thought with regards to streaks and where you can really find them and, and how to really research them and, and look for those perfect storms that collide for plus EV, bet, EV bets. The goal is for everyone on here to improve handicapping. Okay, I'll do more of these types of videos, you know, during the season as I as I know you'll find these helpful. So I'm going to do more of them as the season goes on. Any questions you have, feel free to drop them below. I'll be happy to respond. Um, I want to thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe if you are not already. Always trying to give you that helpful content. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And again, always trying to provide you guys with good quality content, make you guys better as sports betters. I don't care. I mean, I could keep giving you you know favorable bets, but for me, it's it's all about making you guys better, improving the way you guys handicap games, approach games, your process. Um, so that's that's my ultimate goal. I want to thank you guys again for watching. If you, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Drop a comment below. Please subscribe if you are not already. And uh, I will certainly be back soon.